Welcome back, everybody, to Factorio Meiosis, episode number five. When last we met, we were trying to figure out some blueprints for some rails. I've made that blueprint. I made some more even after that. And I spent a few hours clearing out just a stupid amount of aliens. We have now a pretty big amount of space. And we've got access to uh, this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. And we're going to make some cells. We're going to connect it up with rail lines with our solar panel rail hybrid blueprints. All right, first cell is done. This is the concrete cell. Also wired up the mining for the iron cell because we need a bit of iron ore for the concrete. I want to plug it in and see if I did it right. I tried to make it nice and compact, well-designed, good ratios, all that kind of stuff. So uh, I managed to fit in 12 of these miners and I've got this little guy extra and I just didn't really count him in my calculations because he's only going to provide 500 and then he's spent and actually this guy's only doing 700 so really I should have discounted both of those but never mind let's just say 12. 12 miners to 12 smelters and that also works out I think if I did the math right to 12 of these concrete guys who need water so I've got just enough space for the water pipes and no more. Water pipe is going over there. I might need a second pump. We'll find out. Um, so here's how this is working. We're going to use a little trick. You can use multiple underground belts of the different uh, tiers. The yellow, the red, and the blue on the same line. And they will not interfere with each other. So right here we switch from red to yellow. So all of the stone coming down the yellow line will be offloaded into the furnaces and then put back on the red underground belt. If I did it right, we'll find out if there's any errors. Uh, and so that's going to come around here and then down here, and then we're going to switch back to yellow. So the stone bricks, I think they're called. Yeah, stone bricks are going to come down the yellow line. And overlapping with, with that will be red underground again, bringing iron ore from over here. So they're going to be on the same line. On the right-hand side, the normal fast inserters... Uh, we'll be putting them into these guys. We need five. Let me look at this. It's easier to see the ratio. Uh, they need five every 10 seconds. So uh, one every two seconds. And these guys are making one every two seconds. It's kind of the same as the uh, smelting iron into steel. It's five to one. Uh, but five times as long. So one to one. Um, so that's going to go that way. On the left hand side, the long hand inserters are taking them from the same place and putting them just farther away. And then they'll be putting them into this second line, which is also red, but uh, parallel, not overlapping. And so the finished concrete will be coming down here, getting balanced. Although I guess it's not really necessary, but getting balanced and being put into the chest. Let's see if I did it right. Okay, step one. Uh, okay, we might want a belt here. That might be an idea. Actually, let's do it like this. Uh, yeah, this doesn't really need to be balanced. That's error number one. All right, we've already found an error. That's pretty cool. So they're getting balanced. Now, if this is working correctly, we should only see stone on this yellow line and only see bricks on the red line. And I did... Uh, let's see. That is... Oh, it's two stone every three and a half seconds, and you're not powered. All right, we got errors galore. I think my math was off then. Why are you not powered? Because there's no, like, intermediate guy. Okay, just do this. All right, now you're working. So you take... I guess I uh, I neglected this one little piece that we need two stone bricks every four seconds. Uh, I think that means we may have... This may be twice as big as it needs to be based on the size of miners we have here. And that is, in fact, borne out by the fact that it looks like these, these last four are not being used at all. These guys are only sporadically being used. And then coming over here... Oh, we haven't powered this up. Okay, so let's just uh, string some power. There we go. These lines are going to fill up. That's just a very simple grid. No big deal. I guess the lights are turning on one at a time. So that's going to bring iron in. Also, I'm kind of curious... The water seems full most of the time, but yeah, I think uh, I think we have too much going on. Now they're bringing the iron in. I guess it's going to start here. It's being crafted. Uh, I think I actually made this area twice as big. I'll have to go back over the numbers 
but it's gonna come in here. This is what it looks like when you put it down. Looks pretty cool, and it speeds you up. Let's uh, just give me some of that, and let's compare speeds, because I've actually never run on this stuff, nor have I ever made it before. Uh, how do I break it? Um, oh, I think it was, I have to hold a brick in my hand and right click, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Right, right, okay, hold it in your hand and right click. So here's a comparison in speeds, normal running speed. Different sound and quite a bit faster. So we are going to have, where did it go? We're gonna have a road and it's going to be probably this wide or this wide, something like that to drive down. And let me snag some bricks if I can, if these are already backed up. Okay, grab some bricks. This is just the basic design to look nice. We are going to put uh, that along the side and I guess I'll have to replace this now. Just one block wide. And bricks here. Okay, and then uh, replace that with those. Grab some more. So it's gonna, it's gonna look like this, basically. And I'm pretty sure that will speed you up if you drive along it. Let's do a little test. Uh, maybe not. But eventually we won't be using the car anyway. We're gonna have a, uh, the Power Armor Mark II with a bunch of legs in it to run places. So maybe the road doesn't need to be quite this wide, but it's basically gonna look like that. And it's also going to interact with uh, with our little gate blueprints. Anyway, okay, so that's number one. I'm going to design some more. All right, well, I'm working on the coal cell, and why don't we use blueprints to speed things up a bit? That will make this go way faster, way better than doing it myself, so let's just find the overlap point. If I did it correctly, this should overlap well. Do it like that. Like so, and it should just take from my inventory, and blam, oh yeah. And I, I think when I get the logistic robot updates, I think the construction robots might speed up as well, at least I hope so. And eventually, once I have the power armor Mark II, we will be able to have a lot more robots. Uh, okay, so I think it goes there. Oh, look at this, that's nice. Okay, so this is something, I'm not sure if this was in the game back when I played, but you can only place drills where there's actual ore. Now, normally, if there's something in the way of a blueprint, it will invalidate the entire blueprint. Like, I can't place anything here because I've got something overlapping that's red that doesn't fit. But uh, these guys technically can't go here because there's no ore, so they just turn blue. That's good. That means I'm not gonna have to custom make stuff for all these weird edges. So let's come back here. I'll probably have to go resupply eventually anyway, but we should be able to link up that. And then basically I'm using the little lights to line things up like so. And then I should be able to do, we're gonna need the, um, the power and the belts. So I may as well just do that. That's gonna let us get to this point, overlap the lights. Oops, save game. Come all the way back here, overlap lights. Keep moving, robots do their thing. Oh, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing when you get to the stage of the game, you can start to build things like this. It's so much fun. So one of the major things left to figure out is how we're gonna be loading and unloading the trains and how we can use blueprints to speed the process up. My unloading and loading kind of diagrams and whatnot, they're not included in these blueprints because I haven't designed it yet. That's what we're about to try to figure out. Uh, speaking of blueprints, some of you guys asked if you could use these designs in your worlds, and I dug around and I found out that you actually can. There is a mod called Blueprint String, which I installed. It's this thing up on the top left corner of the string screen. It's a Blueprint String top left screen. Okay, got it? Good. So if you want to use this mod, what you need to do is just Google Factorio Blueprint String, and that should take you to a link to the Factorio forums with a download link and all the information for it, it should tell you what folder to download your mods into or to, to put them in. It's super easy, just kind of drag and drop stuff. It'll give you this little folder. 
Next thing you need to do is you need to go to the Factorio Blueprints website and just kind of sign up. I have a link in my description for my blueprints. So what happens is once you have the mod, you can take a blueprint like this one, which I've been using for killing aliens with my robots assembling uh, some laser turrets. You go like this, you click on save and then you name it something and then you click on it. You got to click on it both times with the blueprint itself. That will go into a folder and then you can uh, copy paste the string from that text file into uh, your whatever you post. If you want to download one of mine, uh, when you look at my individual blueprints, you should see something called the uh, blueprint string. It's kind of like the map string that lets you play on the same map as other people. And then you would just load it into there, into this window. And, and there you go. Yeah, you will have all the blueprints that I am using. So I've also downloaded some blueprints because I needed some help with some lane balancing. We have... Right here, we've got six coal lanes, and I need them balanced. So I needed a six to six lane balancer. That is pretty complicated. Where did I put it? Uh, I didn't. Okay, here it is. Good. Okay, so this is a six to six lane balancer. I haven't really tested it. I mean, it looks right. Well, this is complicated stuff. So I'm just going to trust that it's right. If it's not, I'm sure somebody will let me know eventually, and we'll fix it later. But it seems right after just looking at it. It's fairly complicated though, as I said. So there we go. That takes six inputs and then we get six outputs. So we are going to be using a train with one locomotive and three, three not cabooses, but uh, what, do you, what do you call them? Cargo wagons. So that means uh, if we're gonna have three and we wanna load for each side, we could have these three load one side of the train and the these other three go under the rail line and load the other side of the train. That means that each of these guys is going to load one wagon on each side. So, uh, one wagon, I guess I need actual rails down. One wagon can hold or can get input from, I guess you could technically do seven of these guys, but it's going to be easier to do six. So we're going to do six inserters and, oh, it got dark again already. Six inserters, and then six little buffer storage containers, like so. That means uh, each of the containers is going to get fed from one of these. So we need a blueprint that'll take us from one to six. Uh, and that is... Um, which one? <laughs> I'm getting lost. Okay, so that's this one. This will go from one to six. And this one is a little bit more simple. It splits it into two, and then it splits it into four, and it takes the remainder from the outside, the seventh and eighth lane, and it feeds it back into these splits. So those go back in. It just gets divided back up. So I took that, that one to six, and I made a fairly compact version of that that does that three times. So this is going to be our loader on one side, and then when we go to the other side, I'm going to rotate it and then delete the uh, the station. We only need the one station, but that should work. Okay, so let's delete this and see if it works. It's a little bit dark here. There we go. I guess the green light kind of helps illuminate a little bit. Okay, so they're done with that. So we need to have enough room for the other three to go underground. So that means we need to leave three spaces, I think is like that. It's good enough. And then these three are going to go over here. Like that. They're going to go underground. So let's put the, uh, the rail line down. Like so. This will be our new station. Uh, we're going to call this coal cell lamb. There we go. Still adding all of them. Uh, but that's only going to be three. Okay, guys. Well, I've only got I've only got 30 of these guys going at one time right now. Still, way quicker than doing it by hand. So then we're going to uh, rotate this 90 degrees, 180 degrees. Like so. Tell it not to place that. Uh, and then we need the uh, the three belts to come around here. 
Now this is uh, this is kind of overkill. I mean, you don't really need to be this exacting about it. I just thought, since I've got this cool website I just found out about with all these cool blueprints, why not use a few and adapt some? Plus, I mean, I wanted all of my designs in this game for the final cells, not counting the, the stem cell we're, that we started with. I want stuff to look cool. So, uh, this is the way we're going to do it. It's going to look like this. Oh, this is the wrong way. Oh, these are the wrong way. There we go. Okay. Okay, so these are going to go underground. Under the rail line, and then we will figure out how they connect into the rail. Like that. And the uh, the rail itself is going to be like uh, right about there. Something like that. Would look good. Eventually, we're also going to need another thing I need to figure out is uh, we're going to need 45 degree bends in our straight rail sections because at certain points, it's going to be better to go, like for instance here, it's going to be better to go up through here diagonally because of the water features and to split in between these instead of going zigzag. Uh, so I need to design those at some point as well. And you know what, I think I'm gonna redo this just a little bit so that it's symmetrical with the other side. But other than that, we should be pretty good. Okay, let's see. So this one, just sort of eyeballing it. There we go, okay. So this one can go like this. This is uh, this is big overkill, big time overkill. And I've never done, uh, I've never been this kind of anal about how I have my uh, my stuff balanced. But I just figured, why not? Let's go whole hog. So let's see, this needs to go all the way around here. And then I want to plug it in and just see if it's sort of, if it passes the eye test. Does the thing work? And we are blowing through so many materials, but that's okay. That's the name of the game for this base, for sure. Uh, let's see, did we, okay, we ran out of inserters. That's okay for right now. I just want to see if the thing balances itself. We have all of the rail lines. I renamed that to Coal Cell. Um, it's possible I can make this a bit more condensed by turning this 90 degrees. But that's probably not the hugest concern. Let's just see what it looks like. In fact, let's uh, tell you what, just so we get a nice sort of simultaneous start. Oh, wait, you know what? Um, they're already backed up. That's not really going to do much. So let's just go. Let's just do it. Here we go. Connect up these six. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it's not going to really look balanced. Well, it should look balanced immediately, no matter where the stuff's coming in from. Okay, but yeah, that looks pretty good. Won't really be able to tell until this one fills up, but I think that looks all right. I mean, just from looking at these. This one looks like it filled up faster. It looks pretty cool, one way or the other. How fast are these guys filling up? Oh, we're missing a chest there. That's why this one backed up first, because there was no chest there to load into, that's why. All right, that's ma that makes a little bit of sense. And I guess if we're missing inserters some places, those lines would back up first, too, because they're not being inserted anywhere. Yeah, 50-50. Well, you can just, like, go down the line and watch the count go up simultaneously. Okay, pretty good. Pretty good. I like that. That's going to fill up soon. Um, we may as well just let that fill up all the way. I don't see why not. We have a ton of capacity here. Like, this guy alone is going to mine up 91,000 coal. And it wouldn't hurt to have just a backup supply. Just in case. You never know. Okay, so that's that. Uh, next thing to do, I need to set up the uh, the green circuit area. All right, guys. Just about done with the episode. Just about out of time for today. We have done a lot. We've set up several cells. Next episode, we are going to start dumping down these blueprints to connect them up with the trains. So this guy is ridiculous. <laughs> Look at this thing. This is, keep in mind, only for making electronic circuits. All of this copper and the iron we're gonna have from here, and the iron we're gonna pull in from here, 
And the iron we're gonna pull in from here, that is only for electronic circuits. This is the electronic circuit cell. In fact, uh, let's go ahead and just dump a stop here. In fact, if I'm not using a blueprint, I have to have it next to a rail. So just for now, so we can see it on the map, let's do this. We're gonna call it electronic cir cir how do you spell circuit? Circuit? You ever look at a word and uh, it just doesn't look right? There we go, circuit. There we go. Mine red stockinger, no. <laughs> Wherever that is, I'm sure you're a nice fellow or lady. Electronic circuit cell. We've got a coal cell. I also set up a few others. And I will have to do some trimming. And we're also gonna have to do some combining. We gotta add all the smelting and all the crafting. Oh, they're trying to catch up. Oh, okay, we're not quite done. That's why. And I think that is all of it covered. I do want to just turn it on. Let's do a little bit of cleanup of stuff that doesn't need to be there. Oh, and go ahead, yeah, go heal the turrets. Why not? Actually, let's stay out of range of that. I don't want to waste time doing that right now. Uh, you see, this guy's not doing anything. What is powering you? That guy is, okay. And what about this guy? Um, nothing? He's doing nothing. Get this. Sometimes it's faster just to do it yourself. Okay, everybody jump back in my body. Jump in my body. There you go. Okay, uh, so I want to plug it in and just watch it go. Let's see. I have a blank blueprint here. How many mining drills is this thing? It is 218 mining drills. Plus whatever that is for the iron. Okay, let's plug it. Oh, we got a little leftover bit there. I uh, don't need this, I don't think. Nope. And yeah, why not? Go heal those things. Good on ya. And well, of course, I'll tidy it up a little bit more later. Eventually, we are going to dissolve these walls with turrets. Each individual cell will have its own defenses, its own immune system. Uh, but one thing at a time... Oh, come on, guys. I need to... Stop. I need to put my uh, repair packs in my car unless I specifically want them doing that. Let's go ahead and just hook it up. Make sure all the power works, by the way. Bam! Look at all those lights go. And oh, I meant to click on the power line. 590 drills going. That's 25 megawatts just from the drills. Oh, look at it go. Yeah, and they are not compressing the line. It looked like even up to this point, all of it combined. I haven't looked up the math. Uh, how many drills it takes to compress a red line. But that's pretty good. We will add the rest later. I just want to make sure that all this stuff... Yeah, okay, so right here, this isn't getting powered. I had to do some little customized stuff to try to negotiate this edge. That all seems to be going well. I don't see any copper in the iron line or any iron in the copper line. Lovely. Okay, so uh, let me show you just a brief overview of all we did. I did a couple of them off camera anyway. So this is going to be the electronic circuit cell, which you need a stupid amount of in this game. What takes electronic circuits? Well, damn near everything. Red circuits? Yep, they take electronic circuits. Processing units? Yep, they take 20 of them. Um, let's see, what else? Speed modules, which we're going to be making a lot of. They take five. And I haven't researched the next ones, but uh, here they are. Speed module tools. So speed module twos, uh, they take... Five processing units, which is 80 electronic circuits per, right? <laughs> That's a lot. That is a lot. Okay, so another thing I set up, I set up a little brick factory for the sides of our roads right here. Doing the double underground belt trick again. Fairly small, minimal setup. This guy's going to run out soon. He's only got 1,000 capacity. Um, so I just sort of tacked him on. The rest is symmetrical. There's that guy. And tell you what, let's, uh, you're making stone bricks. I would like to have the names on the map, even if we don't have them hooked up to trains yet. Just because it'll look nice and presentable. So we're going to call this, uh, Brick Cell. Here we go. Don't hit that guy. Okay, then we've got Mr. Coal Cell, which is nice and backed up. Isn't this pretty? That just looks cool. If we turn off that... It just, it looks like a circuit. Yeah, this base is going to be ridiculous. This is just our starting hub. We will be expanding a lot. Okay, so that, we did that. And then we also did, uh, we did this guy over here, which uh, I should put down guy. 
I'll give him a cell name. Oops. Let's have it at 90 degrees. Okay, and this is the concrete cell. Bam! All right, so we've got um, we've got the stem cell, steel cell, electronic circuit cell, concrete cell, coal cell, and the brick cell. We got a long way to go. This is a pretty good start, and it'll start accelerating a bit the more we get into the blueprints. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave your comments below, and I'll talk to you next time. See you later. Bye-bye.